Hello, this is Nate Noon here on this podcast for me and Isaiah Stanback is not with me today, but I'm Nate Newton and I'm here for our podcast called Let Me Tell You Something. Uh, it's a podcast that we do uh, every week that uh, me and Isaiah with this lovely uh, dub network we do every week. We're excited about doing it. Uh, the weather all of a sudden became bad and Isaiah, in his most logical way, decided that Nate Newton should take the dangerous road up here so I can talk to you people, you know. And uh, I had no subject that I was t- had to talk about, that I thought about talking about, because once the weather got bad, I was like, wow, you know, everybody started counseling shows. But I was like, you know what? I owe it to Niagara because I'm going to try to get some free stuff from you, Niagara. I need to get a new toilet. I need to get three or four new toilets, Niagara. So I'm dedicated to you by way of Isaiah because he needs some some toilets too. And I know we have to pay a little something, just a little something. But anyway, we're here. Well, I'm here to do the show. Uh, Dub Network has uh, got in place for me, and it's called Let Me Tell You Something. And my topic today will be a little bit about the Cowboys, uh, a little bit about the Super Bowl. Uh, I thought about things when I played in the Super Bowl like, what are some of the questions people would ask? So I got with some of my guys, you know, uh, here at the Dub Network, uh, Tom Fireover, uh, Julie Dobbs, Mitch, uh, Isaiah, and just I said, what are some of the things? Because Isaiah played in the Super Bowl. I think he was with the New York Giants. He played in the Super Bowl. And some of the things uh, leading up to a Super Bowl, it takes, you know, the style is you play your – NFC, AFC championship game, and then you have two two weeks before the Super Bowl. So this week here, you know, I'll talk about that. I'll come back and talk about that, and we'll talk about some of the questions that these uh, young men and women uh, text me uh, concerning these Super Bowls. Now, but first of all, I want to talk about the Cowboys. Uh, that was a that was not the way the Cowboys should have went out. That is not the way we should have played that game. Uh, I I tell people it is one thing when you get into the regular season and you start playing compatible teams. And what I mean by that is teams that has quarterbacks and a sound team uh, that is equal to your talent. How do you do and how do you play against people? That leads up to the Super Bowl. And what I'm saying is when you play a quarterback that is talented or more talented than your quarterback – how do you measure up? Uh, do you have a team? And I'll use uh, the 49ers as an example. I'll use uh, the Seahawks as an example, where you have built build a team of e- excellent athletes, and all you ask for is your quarterback not to lose the game. Now, where you decide the Cowboys at, that's up to you. Whether, whether they've been team building, they had a personnel can Dak fit in or can Dak carry a team? Uh, that That is for you to decide. But my opinion is this right here. I think Dak is the type of guy that can manage a team and take a team very far if he don't make mistakes, which we saw what happened against the 49ers when he made those two critical errors and, and it, hurt, it hurt the team. Uh, I think that we should go out and get a wide receiver a veteran wide receiver. We don't need no number one receiver. We don't need no uh, uh, superstar receiver. What we what we do need is a receiver that can come in, run exact routes, crisp routes, and have excellent hands. I think that'll compel the guys in the room, the C.D. Lambs, the Michael Gallups, uh, to be those type of guys. You know, now the word is jumped up again. Whether well, you go back, go out and, and uh, get Odell Beckham. That's up to them. Uh, but me, give me a guy that can run Chris routes, guys that's going to catch the ball and know where to be. That way your quarterback can build, regain his confidence and his security of what he had maybe a year or so ago. Uh, this past year was an aberration for our quarterback where he threw all those interceptions. Uh, they have rectified, I think, that by trying to get a new voice in the room. I don't think Kellen Moore will be there. Well, we know he won't be here. Uh, we'll have more uh, – uh, Doug uh, Nussbaum, Nussbaum, I hope I'm th- naming the coach's name right. He, I think he'll still be in the room, and maybe they'll have more of Coach McCarthy's input with Dak and how he should 
run this offense. Uh, we got rid of Skip Pete. Running back coach I thought was uh, very helpful to Zeke and to Tony Pollard. I'm sorry that he's gone. We got rid of Leon Lett. Uh, I think he was a great guy, but it's all about what do you have you done lately. And a lot of what was happening was in the middle of the defense. Uh, they were giving it up, man. And uh, when you're averaging 150, some games, almost 200 yards of rushing, they, they start looking at ownership. The coaches start looking, well, who is the coaches? And it always falls on the coaches. It's either going to fall on the assistant coaches, your defense and offensive coordinators, uh, or it's going to fall on your head coach. And so in this case here, the Cowboys, I think, released almost six coaches, assistant coaches. And uh, Leon Led is, you know, I played with Leon Led in a couple of Super Bowls, uh, know him well, uh, wish him much success. Uh, coach Skip Pete, I played with his brother, Rodney Pete. Uh, and I know Coach Pete pretty close. I hope him much success. Everywhere he's gone, he's improved the run game, you know. So uh, I hope him much success. And uh, Rob, I don't know Rob's, uh, Coach Rob's uh, full name, but he was an op the, uh, offensive um, head coach assistant. So he's gone. Uh, so it's a bunch of guys that are out of there. And the, the biggest name, is which is Kellen Moore, uh, he's he's gone. Uh, I think uh, he he's probably went as far as he could here with the quarterback situation with him and Dak and, and running the offense and having great success uh, up until the, the 49ers game. And once again, that is the game that got us last year. So I think uh, I, I wish Coach Keller more much success. Uh, now, a uh, more positive tip on this, I think, is we kept Coach uh, Dan Quinn. You know, right before last week, I walked up to him and said, hey, Coach, let me know if you're going to leave. Give me a call. You know, I was trying to give him my phone number, and he whispered to me, said, Nate, I don't think I'm going nowhere. And I was like, what do you mean? And uh, he said, uh, I think um, if I go anywhere, I'm going to have to be in total control. And, and, that, and that is what you're looking at. And what he mean by total control is – where was his quarterback situation? Are they drafting one? Do they already have one there that can uh, help take you over the top? And then if you do, then that's the situation you want to walk into. And I think with the coaches, with the positions out there, the Denver's of the world, which has been recovered now, a lot of teams already got their coaches, the Denver's of the world, uh, other teams that were out there, they, they just didn't have a quarterback. That was uh, – you know, that you have to worry about, that you don't have to worry about. And so, Coach Quinn, I'm glad you stayed. I'm uh, glad uh, Whit Jr. stayed here with us. I'm glad uh, Coach Harris is still here with us. I'm excited that uh, Coach McCarthy is going to have his hands on the team a little bit more, especially, especially offensively, because one thing, him and Aaron Rodgers may have not saw eye to eye at the end, but I know that Aaron Rodgers thrived in his offense. I know he – uh, didn't throw a lot of interceptions in this offense. And that is what we need to get our hands wrapped right around Dak so that uh, he can cut down on his interceptions. And, and like I tell people, you know, people say this is not normal for Dak. But if you go back and check the stats, you, you can see where it, each year this was inching up until it caught us in the playoffs. I felt we were the better team in the playoffs as far as our quarterback and I thought that we should have won that game because of our quarterback. Uh, Brock Purdy is nowhere near where Dak is. And uh, I believe that with my, all my heart. And we should have won that game. But now moving on uh, from the Dallas Cowboys, like I say, they they have their situation. And me and Isaiah will talk a little bit more about that uh, next week. But uh, this week here, you know, like I said, I sent out a few uh, questionnaires to my peeps. Uh, 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 people that are here uh, at Dub Network, I should have signed it nationwide, but I probably couldn't answer all of these great Cowboy fans out there about this Super Bowl or past Super Bowls or how you prepare, what's your excitement about these Super Bowls. Uh, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you from a player standpoint, for me, it didn't dawn on me until, until the Super Bowl was about over uh, the stage that we was on, the uh, – the magnitude of, of what it took and how after that game, after a couple of days after the game, how you drain, how you, you know, you, you played back then it was 16 games, uh, 
two or three games to get to the Super Bowl. You play by 20 games, I think, uh, to get there. I could be wrong. You know, I don't care. Uh, and you would be drained mentally, physically, and your pockets because everybody coming. All the relatives, the mamas, the daddies, the wife, mamas, the daddies, the cousins, the uh, people you ain't seen in a hundred years that you loved. And you like, you know, you had the question, did you love them that much to give them that Super Bowl ticket? And the hoopla that comes around it, man, uh, I, I just love it all. And like I said, we'll talk a little bit more with Isaiah about that. But I want to get to these questions right quick. Like, uh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Tom Forov, Forov, and I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. Uh, F I R E O V E D. That uh, Tom Forov, whatever your name is, he popped in with the first question. My question was, "Hey guys, give me some of your Super Bowl questions. What would you ask about the Super Bowl?" Thanks, and I and they they quickly responded, and Tom came up. Can the Chiefs D stop the Philly offense? Kansas says that defense was 31st in the league when it came to allowing opponents to score TDs inside the red zone. Let me say this right here, Tom, and let me say this to the fans. Well, this is what I look like. This is what I feel like in today's NFL. When you – all offenses or most offenses can score, especially when you get on this level where it's only two teams left. These teams did not get here because they could not score points or find ways to score points through either turnovers offensively, uh, uh, special teams. They know how to score points, and they take advantage of, the, of these points. But with me, I never really uh, fe- uh, fear the fact that when it comes to Kansas City defensively, you have Steve Spagnola. Uh, Defensive extraordinaire. I think he is a type of guy that makes some of the best adjustments, the in-game adjustments that I've seen, especially in big games. This is the guy I think he was with New York when they beat the Patriots. Steve Spagnola, he knows how to get into one game, diagnose your offensive players, and get the people in the right position. He 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 is special. So I wouldn't really worry about – if they get to the red zone, can, can he dial up something? But what more, what's more important is, and I'm looking at my paper so I can know that the players that I'm speaking on, uh, one thing that's important is Chris Jones, the uh, number 95. Did you see him last week? The bigger the game, the bigger this Chris Jones kid uh, shows up. He plays defensive tackle. They pushes him out, the defensive end. This is one of the few rare athletes. I think he's about 6'5", about 320, and he is an athlete extraordinaire, and he comes to play. So I wouldn't be so worried about this kid, uh, this defense, when it gets into the red zone because these guys are playmaker. Then you got uh, Frank Clark, who's another a uh, big time player, number fifty five, an outside linebacker, an inside linebacker, whatever the scheme acts, he he can do the job. And then you got Juan Thornhill on the backside. You have uh, Justin Reed as as their safeties. These guys ball out. Uh, if you go back and watch the forty nine, uh, excuse me, not the forty nine ers game, but if you go back and, and watch the Bengals game when you play against, excuse me. Yes, the Bengals game. When you watch these guys, they are something special. They play big boy ball. They know how to play. And, and the question I have for everybody is, this, the Super Bowl is not new to these guys. It's the same core guys that was there for the first Super Bowl and the last AFC Championship games. So they know how to handle themselves in big game situations. Uh, so I hope that I answered that question and relieve your uh your worries there, Tom. Uh, and then say, can they protect Mahomes and his uh, gimpy ankle? You know what? I'm not worried about uh, Patrick Mahomes and his gimpy ankle. I, I, I'm truly not. Uh, for this kid to come back and play last week, and now he's got two weeks to rest that gimpy ankle, they got uh, situations 
Uh, the offensive line will be getting uh, healthier and better. So don't 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 worry about Kansas City. Uh, they're not the new guys on the block. Uh, they they they've been here before. They've done this. And I'm not saying Philadelphia's are the new guys on the block. But when you when I played, we knew what to expect, and we knew what two weeks was, and we played with one week off and going into the next week and being able to play. So the Andy Reid's been here. He's he's true and tested. His offensive line is true and tested. You know, uh, they say Eagles had the third most sacks in NFL history, 70. You know what? This kid knows where his primary reads at, where his secondary reads at, just by looking at the coverage. And he can move around enough, as you saw in the last game, he can move around enough that he can get the ball out. Now, I do have to uh, give Philly credit. Uh, This Hassan Reddick. A uh, veteran guy, he is a killer. Uh, Joe's, Joseph Linder should have been a pro bowler. He is a killer. Fletcher Cox is an old wily dog from past. He's bringing the heat. They have, yes, they have a, a defense that can literally get after you with a four man front and don't have to blitz. You know, uh, Brandon Graham is a beast and I've always played well. And they're, and, and like I said, they don't, they don't spring chickens when it comes to this game. They'll be able to play well. I think, but this is why you know matchups uh, makes the best fights, and this is this is one uh, where the strength goes to Philly's defensive line over uh, the Kansas City Chiefs' offensive line, but the equalizer is their quarterback. And now you have to wonder where uh, Kadarius Tony at, where Scanlon at, where uh, Smith Schuster. Can these guys come up and play big in these type games? So far, so good. Uh, my next question uh, was from Ms. Emily Jones, and she says, who has the advantage at quarterback? I'm going to tell you all something. Listen to me. Listen to me. John Wick is my favorite quarterback, and that is Aaron Rodgers. But the best quarterback in the NFL right now today resides in Kansas City. You can ask me about any other quarterback. Tom Brady is the GOAT. Uh, I love them all. But the best quarterback to right now today, the kid in Kansas, uh, the kid in Cincinnati is a beast. Up and coming. But the man is Mahomes. They have the quarterback advantage. They, their quarterback has been there. Their quarterback has done that. And their quarterback is a bit uh, back there again trying to go do it. Ms. Emily, you you know better. Don't even ask that question. I almost cussed. I almost cussed. You know you love that. You know you love a little bit of cuss. I almost cussed. I almost said, what the? You don't ask that question. This is the best quarterback in the league. And you can compare his numbers, his stats, his charisma, his swag, and everything. He has it all. And on top of that, he has a Super Bowl and playing in another one. Now, I'm not saying that Jalen Hurts and his coach and his head coach has not gotten together. Uh, Nick Sirianni, they have gotten together and built a team around this kid. You can see where Jalen has put his heart, his mind, his soul into, into doing whatever it takes for this team. Uh, he says he's not 100%, but guess what? You got you got like 12 days to get yourself healthy, get yourself ready, because in the Super Bowl, you don't get that. You don't get the opportunity to say, hey, you know, I want healthy because you never know when you'll get back. Ask Dan Marino. Ask Dan Marino. Greatest one of the greatest quarterbacks ever to sling that pill was a one hit wonder, baby. Super Bowls ain't promised to you. So, you know, whatever's wrong or is ever ailing you, make sure you get yourself together, bro. But right about now, the top quarterback for me, not only in this Super Bowl, but in this league, is Patrick Mahomes. Yes, sir. Uh, my next, let me get to my next question. I, I get a little excited when it comes to quarterback. I, I just know how big and how uh, important it is to have quarterbacks. And I'm not as smooth as Isaiah. Y'all see me looking down at my phone. Yeah, I'm not smooth like Isaiah, but I do want to ask these questions. And, uh, 
I have a phone number here. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's from Mitch. I got Mitch's phone number. I don't know if it's from, from who it's from. With the talent level of both teams, is this going to be a high-scoring game or where their defenses keep it low? It's about what you do in that first half. You know, Super Bowls have been explosive. It has not been – I don't think it's been a while been Super Bowls that's been under 20 points scored. And I know that Philadelphia has the ability with 70 sacks – a numerous uh, hits on quarterbacks, the ability to shut down the run. I'm talking about to the tune of maybe 77 yards a game. If any defense has that ability to keep it low and to keep it tough, uh, it, it's these Philadelphia Eagles, man. They have, uh, you know, Jonathan uh, Gannon and Michael Clay and all these guys. That's a special team guy, Michael Clay. But Jonathan Gannon, the defensive coordinator, has done a great job. Has done a great job. You saw what he did to the 49ers, but that was a young, experienced quarterback that got hurt early. Her son Reddick got in there, keep sweating all of these. I mean, Josh sweating all of these guys got in there. Keep sweat is a singer. So no, no, he he can't get in there. He probably can't sing his way in there. But anyway, uh that's 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 what about that is. That's that's if any defense has that ability, they do. Now, I'm not saying that Chris Jones and Frank Clark and all of these guys don't have the ability to keep it low, but can they get enough pressure on Jalen Hurts to make him one-dimensional, to make him a throwing quarterback? Uh, we have not seen him on this level throw his weights uh, to, a, to a championship. We've seen it by the other kid. Can, you know, can the Kansas City Chiefs make him – uh, stop that run game and, and with Miles Sanders and all of those guys and Jalen, if they can stop that, that RPO run pass uh, option, if they can do that, we don't know. But, I, you know, it's, it's just hard to say. A uh, low-scoring game and a Super Bowl, both te- teams are high-powered offenses. Both teams average over 25 points a game. It, it'll be hard to stop one another. But the key to these type games is, when you have, when you get into the red zone, or when you get inside the opponent's twenty, can you make them kick field goals versus uh, allowing them to have touchdowns? If you can make the team that makes the other team kicks the most field goals, normally uh, win, uh, wins the game. So we'll see. I don't, I don't do scores. I just feel like uh, you know, and I give you my winner later on. You know, you'll be amazed. Uh, now, it, Isaiah Stanback, this is my boy, my QB. This is my boy who, run, who runs our show, the, the, the Let Me Tell You Something show. He said explosive offenses versus consistent offense, which scares you the most. And what he means by that right there is Mahomes them are very explosive. They can score points in bunches. Or do you really want to deal with Jalen Hurts and the coach Sirianni, the way he's going to methodically try to trickle it down the field? They know that they their every uh, possession that they have, he's gonna they're gonna try to stretch it out. They're gonna try to uh, make that defense of Frank Clark and Chris Jones and all of those guys, William Gay and all of those guys, Willie Gay and all the guys. He's trying to make all of these guys work. He's trying to wear them down. So at the end of the game, they can take over. Do you want that right there? Or do you want the quarterback that can be down by 15 points and all of a sudden a seven point and all of a sudden they hit you with a, with a, with a, with a, with a nine, 10, 15 piece real quick, like in, in less than five or six minutes, they can, they can just change the outcome of a game. Uh, I've seen Mahomes be able to trickle down the field. He's been in enough games like that, but this is explosive, uh, Explosive uh, team. Even though they lost Hill, you know, uh, you still got Schuster. He's making big plays. They went out and got Kadarius Tony during the season, which I think he's a little banged up. He's a big play waiting to happen, so you have to keep your eye on these guys. They got some tough running backs that can make some plays. And also, don't forget, Mahomes can do that same thing. But what would you rather have, that matriculous, methodical, slow killer like Philly? 
that can go 15 plays, 10 plays, 11 plays? Or do you want that one that one hit a quitter? Like that big knockout artist like Mike Tyson that'll get you at any point in time. It can be the 12th round and all of a sudden, boom, hit you with that overhand right and all of a sudden you was uh, down by down by four and now they're up by three. So uh, which one would you like, Isaiah? I think that was a good question right there. Uh, Miss Julie Dobbs. Oh, my God, Miss Julie Dobbs. You got to put that right there. I can't turn. What does it feel like to reach that ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl? How do you put it into words? You can't. Uh, each player has a different feeling of where they come from, what they have went through, how they've, how they've dealt with it. Uh, how to, you know, some people, you know, like me, I, you know, back then I didn't think that way, but hey, you know, I think like, wow, man, God put me in this position. I wish I'd have been better back then to know him and to, and, and to let the world know on that type of stage. But I know that a lot of people just, you know, they start crying, you know, because they have accomplished that ultimate goal, you know, being a kid, watching it on TV. Some people think they family. Uh, it just, it's just where you're at in life and what you're thinking at that time, you know. And, uh, you know, I've seen the great Michael Jackson perform. I've, wow, at halftime, I've been around, been up, been down in Super Bowl. So you get a range of emotions now. And I'm talking like this is a every year occurrence for most teams. I was fortunate. I came in the league and played three or four years. And then all of a sudden I ran off maybe three Super Bowls in four years. So I got a back-to-back feeling. Then I got skipped and got another one. So each one I'm brought on a different feeling, man. Each one I'm brought on, 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 a, on a different feeling. And uh, that last one was, and I kind of knew it was our last one because, uh, you know, you just could feel like, you know, all of us as players wouldn't beat us. Some of the coaches would change because every year we would change coaches. So we kind of feel that we got, we felt that we got past a great Pittsburgh team for that last one. That was kind of the biggest win. The most exciting one was that first one. Wow. That, that, wow. That was that first one was the most exciting one, man. I think that was in Pasadena. Then the next one I think was in somewhere in, in um, Arizona. And uh, that's the one we was aware of and we were showing out and we was doing our thing. And I could be having to confuse because Atlanta was in there somewhere. But anyway, I know we want them all. So you can you can line it up how you want. Uh, let's move on here. Let me uh, let me look at this thing again. Make, good, good question, Miss Julie. After you uh, tried to make the rest of the group look bad for not driving in, doing a, a storm. Come on, Julie, don't do that. It's a storm out there. Everybody can't drive in. Thank you. Uh, in the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, are the players thinking about anything else in the world besides the Super Bowl? Yes. Back then, they used to give us our tickets. The week, the two weeks before the Super Bowl, come that Tuesday, Wednesday, you're getting bombarded by tickets. You're getting bombarded by the hotel rooms. At that time, I had a wife, Miss Dorothy. She took care of all of that. You know, you got cousins coming from it. Everywhere you got lost friends talking about, man, I've been with you all all your life, and it, man, I ain't meet you until I was in the twelfth grade. I I ain't know you until I was at FAMU. So you got a lot on your mind. You know, you may want to think nothing but Super Bowl, but we had a coach in Coach Johnson. He didn't allow us to think of nothing but the Super Bowl, and it started maybe the second playoff game where he he just stopped. You know, telling us, you know, you can hang upside down by your yin yangs or your gonads for for two or three weeks. You got to concentrate. This don't come to everybody all the time. And so he kept us in. He he told us. He said, if I hear any player going into the second week still trying to get rid of Super Bowl tickets, I'm gonna be upset. He wanted us to get those Super Bowl tickets out of the way. The first week. Now, he knew he was going to have to deal with rooms and stuff maybe going into the second week, but he wanted everything that could be a distraction off the field, you know, to not be that. He was telling make up with your wives, do whatever, buy them whatever. But right now, we need you, you know, to be the best you can be because, like I said, you know, and one player always come to mind for me is Dan Marino. Dan Marino's stats. Say he should he should have played in two or three Super Bowls. I mean, the dude was a beast, but he only saw one. 
Uh, I think uh, up to this day, Aaron Rodgers is on the scene one. You know, you don't want to be that guy. You want to be that guy that's always back in there like the Brady's. You want to be like um, uh, this kid Mahomes, you know, uh, putting everything you got into it. It took Andy Reid forever to uh, get to get where he's at. And so he's kind of mastered it, like, like Belichick had it. He kind of mastered it, took advantage of, his, of, of the window of his quarterback, you know. So uh, that's that's another good question, Ms. Dodd. Let me look on down here. Uh, yeah, what's more important, uh, stopping Hurts from – from the run or making Mahomes get out and run on on his boo boo and this is uh fourteen fourteen something that right there. Uh the the deal is you have to hit Mahomes in order to make him feel that leg the way he needs to feel it. And I ain't saying nothing dirty, but you gotta take him to the ground. You gotta have him under constant fear. You know, uh, and, and and if you can't do that, if you can't do that, uh, Mahomes is going to have his way. You know, uh, Hurts, I think as the year went on, they went less run versus pass and all of those options, and they allowed him to throw the ball. But he's at his best, and his team is at his best when he moves around and when he runs instinctively. I ain't so much – believe that they have to design plays for him. But uh, I do believe that they have to uh, let him get out and run because now that opens it up for Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. And uh, let me look on this sheet. He had, They have uh, another uh, dynamic running back. Uh, and uh, let me find this cat right here if y'all would bear with me. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell, number 14. He's played – and every game that he's played in, he's made a big play. He he has been something truly special to watch. This number fourteen. So keep your eye on him. He's he can be an X factor for these for these guys, man. Uh, he is special. And then you know the uh, the their wide receiver. They have two AJ Brown, uh, Devontae Smith. Nice. Big play man, but uh, this is A.J. Brown. Don't play with him. He will run you over. He will run by you. Uh, he is cold-blooded. And uh, Devontae Smith is a cold-blooded route runner. Uh, thin, not a big guy, and I think that throws people off. And once he run that route, break on you, and do what he has to do and make that catch, then you, you want to tighten up. But don't tighten up too late because if you do, it'll, it'll be a touchdown. He'll be on ticket to the house. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster for Kansas City, uh, uh, Kadarius Toney, uh, these guys are nice, Justin Watson, and uh, all of these guys are nice, uh, Scales, uh, Marquise. Valdez, Skelly, all of these guys are nice. But Philly, I think, just has the nicer receivers. It has the nice receivers. Uh, I think the offensive line of Philadelphia is awesome. You know, it's awesome. Uh, they're led by uh, uh, Jason Kelsey, and that leads you automatically to Kelsey, the tight end for Kansas City. But I think Philly has the best offensive line. I think Philly has the best defense. And I think Kansas City, and I know Kansas City has the best quarterback. Uh, special teams is what and what. I think uh, it's just when you watch a game of this magnitude and you respect the NFL like I do, you know, when teams have put together, a lot of times you say, oh, man, these teams made – they made a run. They got hot at the, at the right time. Uh, I think Kansas City has been consistent in who they are and what they've been trying to build all year, Coach Andy Reeds. I think uh, Coach Nick Sariani and what he's been trying to build all year has, has, uh, has held steady. Both quarterbacks are the heartbeats of their teams. Uh, like I say, you know, it's rare that you have – a Philadelphia, I think, has the best defensive line over 
overall, led by uh, Fletcher Cox. Uh, he's the veteran guy the voice in that room and Brandon Graham and guys like that. And then you have, uh, I can't think of the big guy uh, that, that that came in there uh, that played in the Super Bowl with um, with uh, with with uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, I'm trying to look him up here while I while I keep continue to talk to you guys. Reddick Johnson, uh, mm, Dumacon Sue. Wow, and I even talked about the big rookie they have there. Uh, Jordan Davis. I don't know if he's. I think I saw a little bit of him. Like they have that ability on defense, and, and I know the offensive line uh, is, is 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 the bomb. I mean, uh, you know, you got the uh, Lane Johnson is their heartbeat. I mean, the big the uh, Kelsey is their center, and he lines everybody up. But Big Johnson, he takes care of. Uh, last two weeks, he's taken care of the better pass rushers, and uh, they can adjust everywhere else. And you know, normally when you say uh, that the offense and defensive lines of one team is more dominant than the other offense and defensive lines, you normally pick those that, that team to win. But the the common factor here, the common factor here is Patrick Mahomes. And a lot of people say, can he make that difference? Uh, if given an opportunity, he will make that difference. Uh, a lot of people don't value that quarterback position and how it is being coached. I think Coach Andy Reid and uh, his uh, offensive coordinator, uh, Eric B. Enemy, does a great job. I think they work hand in hand. I think at different times they call it the plays and the situations and uh, – and and I just think um, they 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 can they can if if they could get in the right situations and keep the game manageable. Uh, if it's a close game, I'm scared because that puts Mahomes on top. Uh, what Philadelphia I think is out to get on them and continue to apply pressure on on Mahomes and and we'll see how it play out. Uh, I've spoken on the Cowboys. Uh, I've spoken on uh, this Super Bowl a little bit, and like I say, me and Isaiah, uh, if the weather breaks a little bit next week, we'll be back in here, you know, and uh, doing our thing. And uh, I want to thank Niagara uh, for partnering up with uh, me and Isaiah and, and doing what they've done. And uh, and, uh, and I just thank our, our Dub Nation for what what they continue to do and helping all of our shows get on. We got a lot of shows. We got football. We got basketball. We got uh Baseball and we got hockey, so you know we we we're, we're the major network. We're the ultimate roundtable. So y'all come on in, uh, uh, tune into the Dub Network. And I know I told you guys I would give y'all a victor, man. Uh, this goes against everything that I am, but uh, like I tell people, it's certain conferences that I love in college is the SEC. You know, I love SEC football because it's physical, it's nasty, and uh, I just think they had the better players. And I love one conference, man. I hate this. Uh, I love. I hate this division, but I love this division. They call it the NFC East: the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Commanders, uh, the Giants. You know, we had a chance to have four teams, and then we kind of threw it away with the Commanders. You know, they couldn't decide on their quarterback. But uh, I'm riding with the uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles, man. I hate that. That hurt me, Mitch. That hurts me. To have to ride with that, but they, the NFC East, uh, we laughed at the NFC East. We ridiculed the NFC East. We thought it'll be one and a half teams with the Cowboys and the Eagles at the end. Uh, but it was it was the Eagles at the end, and the Cowboys got in the playoffs, and the Giants were in the playoffs. And you can see what Coach Dabo is doing with the New York Giants and how he's trying to build that team. And uh, and I co- and I hope Coach get himself together down there with the Commanders. And get the uh, uh, the Washington Commanders going. Uh, I, I just tell you, I'm sticking with the East. You know, I love Patrick Mahomes. I think he just, he's the top quarterback in the league. You know, surpassing uh, John Wick, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but that's who I'm going with. I ain't turning my back on the East, baby. And I'm hoping that if once Philly win this right here, it'll get our Cowboys opportunity to catapult themselves. Talent-wise, mentally, physically, 
to do what is necessary to overtake them. So uh, that's it. I've told you all I had to tell you all. Let me tell you something. I thank Ren for coming in and braving the weather. Ren Miller, you know, TCU guy. And, hey, we, hey, fam, you, TCU, over my you, baby. We came on in here. We braved the weather. I just want to thank you people for listening, for tuning in, hey, to the De- Dub Network. Let me tell you something. Nate Newton, Isaiah Stanback, gone. <laughs>